started off when, you know, when I was really young, my, my dad would actually take me to the shop. My dad owned a shop in uh, San Jose. And, uh, you know, he didn't want me to be raised by a babysitter. So, you know, while my mom would be at work, he would just bring me to the shop and, you know, just hang out over there. And back then, I didn't even really care about, you know, anything, you know. I didn't, I wanted video games and toys. I didn't think that later on down the line, I would actually become, you know, car enthusiasts like that. Uh, as I, I grew into my teen years, uh, I actually, you know, my cousins, you know, they're in that phase where they were into modifying cars. And, you know, I started trying to tag along and here and there. And uh, one of my cousins actually brought me to Pro-Am competition. And what actually uh, sparked my interest in this car was I actually saw um, a couple of the guys driving one of these. And I just really liked the lines on them, you know, and, and the way they looked at when they were moving and then the kind of kits that they had on them, all that stuff. It, it was, it was, it's what sparked it for me. And after that, I just, you know, had to have one. My name is Carl DeCousin. I drive a 1985 Toyota Corolla GTS. How it feels to drive a Corolla, it, it's really different. Um, when I first got into it, it was definitely not what I expected. Um, the guys that I saw at that Pro-Am competition, they were, they were driving it the way it was supposed to be. When I first got into it, it it didn't seem that way, you know. I was like, man, this car's slow. You know, I tried to slide it here and there. I almost hit a curb a couple of times the first time around, and and then I actually did hit a curb when I actually got it sliding. I didn't really know what I was doing at the time, and um, it took a couple of uh, skid pad events for me to actually finally figure out um, after riding along with some of my friends that you really have to beat the crap out of the car. You have to come in hot. Don't lift your pedal up clutch kick uh, while you're turning in and snap it back and then you know when when you do feel your revs start to drop you have to clutch kick it again and it's very violent it feels crazy inside the car but it looks normal you know like it looks like it's barely moving outside and it's it's a good feeling and I mean gripping it is also pretty cool you know uh, the feeling I get when when I'm you know running through the mountain or whatever and and the car's just doing everything that I want it to do uh, the steering inputs on point, um, you know, suspension's doing its job, and and the car's just wanting to go where I want it to go without sending me over to the side of the cliff. suspension setup on this car is a pretty common uh, setup among the Corolla guys. Seeing that there is a live axle rear end on it, I do run a conventional spring and shock setup in the back, but I do run coilovers in the front, along with uh, Tanabe sway bars in the front and rear. Um, I do run swift springs as well. With the way I have my suspension set up, I can switch between uh, drifting and, and grip driving as well. Uh, I did mark my camber plates to kind of back my camber out when I'm out gripping, but for today, I did just <laughs> roll out with it still at negative five and a half. My wheel and tire setup for this car is actually just stock wheels off of a premium package 240Z from back in the 70s. They're 14 by seven, negative 10 offset. On a Corolla body, that's actually pretty perfect with a minor roll at most. Um, I do run 185, uh, 60 hand cooks on here. They're just regular all seasons because you know, when my tires go bad, I just throw them in the back and I roast them and then I buy some new tires. Um, you know, if I was more competitive, maybe I would run some kind of uh, different compound, but for me, all season works. And I mean, you know, I just let some air out and I can still get some grip into this thing. The engine setup that I run in this currently is a 16 valve uh, small port from a JDM AE92. That was the non-TVIS motor where they bumped the compression up on it. This does have a fresh rebuild on it with all brand new OEM oversized parts on it. Um, I do run tow to valve train on it with uh, HKS 264 and 256 cams on it. The exhaust setup on my car is pretty basic. It's just a pace setter made it to a Buddy Club Spec 2 exhaust. The drive actually it wasn't all that bad from Sacramento to LA. Only fill up uh, once and used a tank and a half on the way down. When uh, Toyota released the this 
Generation Corolla in the United States back in 84. Uh, they did release it in two variations, um, with the exception of in, back in 84, they only released the SR5. In 85 was when the first GTS was actually released. Those came with a twin cab 16 valve 4AG. Made it to a T50 as well, but with the exception of the rear end being rear disc with a two-way limited slip diff differential included in the package. I would say that this car has become a classic. Not a lot of people have realized that this was the last rear-wheel drive Corolla to, to be released. On a pretty common basis, do get the Wanderer that will come up to me and ask me if I ever do want to sell my car. Even, you know, times where I break the car or something goes wrong with it um, and I'm just, you know, pissed off about it. I always consider selling it and then right you know right at the last moment right before i'm about to post it i always change my mind so i don't know it's a it's kind of love hate thing and i could say every day that i'm gonna eventually sell this car but i probably won't actually got it from an Aristo, being that my car was originally non naturally aspirated, like I mentioned. Uh, upon building it, it has ARP head studs, uh, OEM TT head gasket, basic, uh, pretty much a basic head build for the beginning. Uh, as far as anything else, I have a Garrett 67mm single turbo. 